These are troubling times. Disease has spread across our world, but in times like these, heroes come to the forefront. Scientists, doctors, and more combine their abilities against the pandemic. The game of Pandemic is played on a map of the world, and the cities have been separated into four regions, blue, yellow, black, and red. This is a cooperative game, which means the players will be working together as a team to find the cure for four diseases before time runs out. Each player will be acting as a pathogen specialist with their own special abilities to help in their mission. There are two main decks of cards to be aware of. The blue deck is made up of player cards, which either have the names of cities on them, or are event cards, which have game-changing abilities. Use them wisely. The green deck is made up of infection cards, and these determine where the diseases spread throughout the world. The concentration of these diseases will be indicated by cubes, whose colors indicate in which region they will appear. To begin setup, make sure that all of the disease cubes are placed where everyone can reach them. Next, place the cure markers. These will show which cures have been researched and if any of the diseases have been eradicated. Next, place the first research station in Atlanta, the home of the CDC, and the starting point for all players. You then will want to place the outbreak counter and infection rate counters on their starting positions on the board. Shuffle the infection deck and draw three sets of three. These will be the first cities to be infected. On the first three cities, place three cubes, the next three get two, and the next set get one. Be sure to use the cubes that match the color of the city's regions. After you have infected the cities, place the infection deck in its place on the board and place the used cards in the discard pile. Next, randomly deal one roll card to each player. These are your player's characters, and each have special rules that apply to each of them. This medic specializes in removing large amounts of cubes from the board at a time. This is very useful when it comes to keeping the spread of diseases in check. Each card has a matching pawn, and these pawns will all start in Atlanta. With the player deck, deal out cards to each player. The number of cards the players start with depends on the number of players there are. In this game, there are three players, so they each get three cards. Next, decide the difficulty of the game by deciding how many epidemic cards you will have in the player deck. Four cards for normal difficulty, five for difficult, and six, well, yeah, it's bad. I'm gonna go with four this time. You're going to want to mix these cards into the player deck as evenly as possible so they don't bunch up. The best way to do this is to make smaller decks on top of each of the epidemic cards. Shuffle each one of these small decks individually and then stack them back together. Once this is done, place the player card deck on the board. You are finally ready for the game to begin. On each player's turn, they have four actions. These actions can be moving your pawn from one city to the next, discarding a card to go from anywhere on the map to that city, or vice versa, moving your pawn from one research center to another, removing one disease cube from your current city, discarding the card of your current city to build a research center, giving the card of your current city to another player, or taking it from them, or discarding five cards of the same color to find the cure for that disease. This has to be at a research center though. And if you can't remember all of that, don't worry. They have reference cards to help. To show you how it all works, let's watch a game unfold. The teal player goes first, spending his action to move to Washington. His second action to remove a cube. His third action to move to New York City. And fourth to remove another cube. To finish his turn, he draws two cards from the player deck and puts them in his hand. Finally, he flips over the infection cards. The infection rate counter says we need to flip two cards, and on each of the cities revealed, we place one disease cube. The orange player goes next, 
using three actions to get to Tokyo, and his last action to use his special ability to remove all of the red cubes on that city. He draws his two cards and infects the next two cities. The scientist uses her actions to get to NYC, and then seeing that her colleague already has two blue cards in his hand, passes her New York City card to him, bringing the group one step closer to finding the cure to the Blue Plague. She has one action left, so she decides to remove the last blue cube in her current city. Play continues until, uh oh, it's an epidemic card. It was only a matter of time. Whenever one of these cards is revealed, a few things happen. The infection rate counter is moved up one space. The bottom card of the infection deck is discarded and three cubes are placed on that city. And finally, all of the discarded infection cards are shuffled and placed back on top of the infection deck. Once the epidemic has been resolved, the player finishes their turn. They finish drawing their cards and they infect however many cities the counter says. The number of a color's cubes on a single city cannot exceed three. If for any reason another cube of that color is added to a city that is full, an outbreak occurs. In other words, all of the connected cities get an additional cube of that color, and the outbreak counter is moved. If an outbreak occurs next to a city that also has three cubes of that color, then another outbreak occurs in that city. In this way, a single chain reaction can turn a serious problem into a global catastrophe. There is a catch though. In this example, the black city's outbreak reaches into neighboring blue cities. This means that a black cube is placed in them as well. However, even though Madrid has three cubes on it already, it doesn't experience an outbreak because the new cube is a different color. In theory, a very unfortunate city could have 12 cubes on it, three of four colors. The players can lose the game in three ways. The outbreak counter reaches its final point, a player cannot draw two player cards at the end of their turn, or the players run out of disease cubes. Players win the game by researching all four cures, but in addition to coming closer to winning, finding cures has two other benefits. When a player uses an action to remove cubes of a cured disease, all the cubes of that color are removed at once. Also, if the last cube of a cured disease is removed from the board, that disease is considered to be eradicated, meaning that no cubes of that color can be put on the board for any reason. So that's the game of Pandemic. It's a really fun game, and I would suggest you try it out. And I would like to dedicate this video to all of the emergency response workers around the globe who are putting their lives on the line during this crisis. You are appreciated, and our thoughts and prayers are with you, always. And until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out, I'll catch you later.